Hello everyone, JJIR here, and in this video we're going to see how to automatically grade math using Google Forms and LaTeX, which is essentially a document preparation system which allows us to use anything we can type on a keyboard as plain text instead of having to write out signs and symbols that we would do classically on a piece of paper for math. So for this, we need something like this PDF here, which I will share in the description below the video, which allows us to understand how to write out using our keyboard anything that previously was done with a symbol, like, for example, alpha. And we can do this for anything that we need for math. So basically, any type of math equation can now be done just with our keyboard. And this helps tremendously also to help the students understand in the future when they're actually working, they're not going to be writing out math symbols, but rather they're going to have to either be putting it in Excel or putting it in programming languages or whatnot. And the way they're going to do this is in some form or other using this. So for example, a classical example, we have the asterisk here and it has a backslash with the AST and other signs and symbols you can find here in this PDF. And there's plenty of websites that explain how to use LaTeX and how to design LaTeX equations so that you can type them out on your keyboard instead of having to write them out on a piece of paper. So a while back, I started helping certain professors that were teaching math to set this up. I myself am not a math professor. I am a English professor, but either way, because I saw the usefulness of how to transform education using LaTeX in the field of math, I decided to help them set this up a little bit. So we were dealing with junior high and high school students, nothing too complex, but we started setting up Google Docs that would allow them to see how this would be set up if we were going to start using LaTeX. And on top of this, we started setting up norms because when you want to automatically grade something, you not only need what would be the equation, but you also need to set up the rules for spacing in between the things that you're putting in within the equation. Because if you've used Google Forms before, you know that the spacing in between certain letters or things that you want to put into the text is going to be graded. So if I put, example, for example, two spaces here, that would be marked as wrong. So either I have to put that as an option within Google Forms, or I have to explain to the students very clearly that you cannot put double spaces. On top of that, when the equations get to be much more complex, for example, when we transform this into format LaTeX, we have to explain to the students with a very clear set of guidelines where to put the spaces. Now, we decided to put spaces here. We don't need to put spaces here, but it was help, helpful so that you could read it much easier. So we decided to select certain moments where the spacing was going to be forced or obligatory, and then in other moments where you were not going to need it. So for example, here, we didn't put a space in between the parentheses, but we did decide to put a space in between the I and the bracket here. So all of this can be designed by the professors who are going to offer up the class. But what I do need to underline, it must be very, very clear to the students how exactly they need to use the spaces so that this can be correctly graded automatically in a Google form. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole bunch of problems. The other important thing here is that because this is going to be new for the students, you need to go backwards, so to speak, and offer them much simpler equations at the beginning and you don't have to do this for an entire semester, but you do need to do it for a couple of weeks so that the students understand how to transform what they previously wrote down with signs and symbols in text like format. So you have to give them a little bit of leeway, offer them plenty of exercises for them to be able to practice this before you start demanding them to actually turn something in that's actually going to be officially graded. Very, very important on a pedagogical level to do that beforehand before you start grading things officially. So all of the signs and symbols, like I mentioned before, is going to be in that PDF that I mentioned previously. So it's just a matter of looking through this and sharing this in Google Classroom so that the students and the professors understand what they need to use to represent certain signs and symbols, and then developing in a second level the rules and norms that you're going to use in relationship to the spacing. Not only that, there's a third thing that needs to be taken in consideration. For example, here we actually did use the asterisk. Instead of using what we have down here in group number six, 
which would be this here, the AST with the backsplash. So you also need to make sure the students understand when they should use this and when they should type it out as this here. So you decide as the professor how you want to do this. You just need to make sure that the students follow certain norms. If you're not going to do that, then you need to make sure that in Google Forms you offer both options as correct answers, either using this or this. So now that we've explained a little bit about how this can be used, let's go to Google Form and see an example of this. So in this case, we actually have here above the answer. And you're asking, why would we put the answer here? The thing here is the following. We have to think outside the box if we're going to start asking the students to do math at home. Why? Because they have the entire internet. And unless you're using a Chromebook in which you can control very precisely what they're looking at at a certain time, because you're not going to be able to isolate the Chromebook completely during the entire day. So unless you have very specific circumstances in which they're actually doing their math class from a certain hour to a certain hour, and you can control remotely what they're seeing on the Chromebook, to a certain degree, you can see exactly what they're doing. But in normal circumstances, the students are going to be working by themselves, and they're going to have the entire internet at their disposal to find whatever things they need to find or whatever they want to copy. So in a classical manner, if we go back here to our wonderful Google Doc, which I will also share under the video in the description, if we have an equation similar to something like this up here, which is a classical one, we can take this and we can grab this as the equation and ask the students, please respond and give me the steps that you that you use to resolve this. So here's the equation and here's the answer below. And these are the four steps that normally the student would use to resolve this equation. But if we don't ask for very precise things here, the only thing the student is going to do is going to, is going to copy the equation here from Google Classroom or the form and go to this wonderful website, which is called Wolfram Alpha, and they're going to paste it there, they're going to click on enter, and they're going to find the answer because Wolfram Alpha not only puts the LaTeX in classical symbol format, it will also give the steps on how to resolve this equation. In other applications, you can actually take a picture of these types of equations and it will offer the solution. So if we're going to just classically give an equation and ask the student for a solution, the only thing the student is going to do is going to want to go online find out how to, to resolve it, and then put that into our Google Form, which is not going to be very helpful. So what we want to do is we want to ask for a couple things. First of all, typically what we would do is give the solution, because we already know the student is going to find this online, and ask them for the steps that they need to resolve it. This is much harder because Wolfram Alpha naturally is expecting that you give the equation, not the solution. So this already puts an obstacle in front of the students to say, okay, well, I can't find it as easily. And then on top of that, we need to make sure that we ask in a very precise manner within the instructions how exactly the students should resolve it. So if on a typical level, there's four steps. Maybe there could be five, maybe there could be three. But in this case, what we're asking is the students to resolve this in four steps and not in three and not in five. So we're actually reducing this more. Now, one could think that this is limiting creativity, and we understand that there are ways of resolving things much more efficiently. Maybe you could do steps instead of four. But the point here is that we want the students to be able to analyze what they're looking at and see how they can divide it up. So the problem isn't figuring out the solution. The problem is how could I divide this up? Even if I could do this in two steps, how could I resolve this in four steps? So this is much more demanding upon a student than just saying, okay, here's the equation and figure it out. But rather we're doing it in the opposite way, so to speak, so that they can figure out how they got there. This will also help them be more analytical, not only in math, but in other areas as well. So I do highly suggest trying to change the methodology a little bit here so that the students can resolve certain problems in a much more demanding manner than just saying, okay, here's a solution and then I'm done with it. So if we go back to our math form, form here, we have the math question. I've put the answer down. And in these, we have actually asked for the steps. So what's the first step? What's the second? What's the third? What's the fourth? Presupposing again that maybe you could resolve this in two. But we're asking the students to say, if this could be resolved in four, and we know it can be, 
what would be the four steps? And here, as we mentioned before, if we go to the answer key, we're saying you have to type it out exactly this way. And I have had students do this precisely this way. It does cost them at the beginning, and that's why it's so important that you start off with simpler equations so they develop the habit of writing things out very precisely. Otherwise, they're going to fail miserably at this at the beginning. But if they're doing practice with this and they get the hang of it, especially understanding when to put the spaces and when not to, understanding the professor will dictate when that will be uh, the possibility or not. Then, for example, here we have two options. And the, the second option here, we have the AST as the asterisk. And if we go up here to the first option, if we move around and see, we'll see that the asterisk is the classical asterisk. So we have the two options here so that if the student uses either one of these, it will be marked as correct. If you think the student will have more problems, then you can take rid get rid of the spaces and add them or whatever you need. But the idea here is to put the options down so that the student only has a few possibilities of getting this correct and not putting in whatever comes to his mind or her mind. So it's important to set these up correctly so that they can be automatically graded. And again, this will de depend a lot on the instructions that you give, the amount of practice the student had previously to develop these equations correctly, et cetera, et cetera. But I do want to underline that the students can achieve this. And actually, I've done the same thing with English in which I've asked for subordinate clauses in English, and they have to type out the entire sentence exactly as I am suggesting they do it so that they understand how to set up these things. Obviously, my instructions are very precise. So things, for example, if there was an option to put a that or a which, I tell them to choose one of those two in a certain circumstances so that they don't put in whatever and then they get it marked as wrong. So it's very important to be creative with the instructions, to be very precise with the instructions, and then to make sure that this is set up correctly so the students can actually achieve it in a very precise manner. And you will see the differences within a month or two. Now, one question would be on, on a pedagogical level, why would I want to be so demanding on the students? Well, what I respond to the students is that if you fail to put a point in a certain number when you're doing financing or if you fail to put a certain number when you're doing architecture or something's horribly going to go wrong in the future. So they need to be able to understand how to do these things in a very precise manner as well on a level, for example, if you're going to do Excel, you can also automatically grade Excel here and Excel is the same way. If you're putting things wrong, if you put a parentheses out of place, if you put something out of place, the whole equation fails. So it is something that we can demand of the students to be more precise and exact when they're doing the equations or English or whatever they're doing here to make sure they form the habit of, be, of paying more attention to what they're doing when they're typing things out. So this also develops other very useful habits for them in the future, not just math, but for other things as well. So again, to finish off, it, this is one way you can do this. So we have it in such a way that they're giving the steps for the certain equation, but you can do this in other ways. You can actually have them work as a team and have each student offer one of the steps and another student offer another step, et cetera, et cetera, so that they're working in a team type of atmosphere when they're setting up these equations. You can also have it to where the student actually designs the question with the steps and then offers this to another student and the other student has to figure out how to resolve it and if they find errors to tell their companion you know what this doesn't work because of this and this and this so funny enough when the students actually design the equations and the steps to the equations and when they find out that their other companions are finding errors they are actually more conscious of what they're doing so you can actually develop this in the team atmosphere to where the students are actually learning math by correcting each other because they're offering the equations and the steps one to another. And then you'll find other things that come out when you're doing this. But the funny thing is that in many instances, certain students will become much more proactive with their math assignments when they see that they can actually design the equations and it's not just the professor giving me something that I have to passively do. And for practicing, keep in mind the other thing you can do playing around with Google Forms here is remember that you have validation here and you can put something, for example, regular expression and then be something that matches and then put one of these steps here and the students can't turn in the form until they get it right. So they can actually practice in doing this various times until they finally get the correct step before they turn it in so they don't get a low grade at the beginning. But rather, they can do this for even maybe a couple hours and they get a 10 or a 100, depending on how your grading system is. 
but you guarantee that the students will actually get the highest grade because they've actually practiced and they've gotten it completely correct before turning in. So we just simply grab this here and we put it down here as pattern. And then we can play, you can say, try again here. And in that way, they have to get this thing exactly correct before they can turn it in. So there's various ways you can play around with this so that at the end, the students are actually learning. What is important is to think outside the box, try to change what you've been doing classically in relationship to math or English or history even, so that the Google Form along with the instruments you have can be used to automatically grade things instead of trying to review things manually, which is what we're trying to avoid here. And making sure that you presuppose that when the students are home, they're obviously going to look for absolutely anything they can grab on the internet because it's obviously easier for them mentally. But if we want to demand upon them so that they're actually forming themselves, we have to be as professors more creative to making sure that the students are actually making a mental effort when they're turning something in. So in this case, we need quality over quantity, meaning maybe one of these types of exercises where they're going to have to resolve four steps. This might take at the beginning for a student maybe one or two hours. So we shouldn't be giving them tons of these exercises at the beginning until they learn how to do it. So look towards may helping them to setting up the things that they need in an adequate manner, giving them the time they need, and making sure they have the assistance, which is also important here, so that if they need help, you're there with Hangouts Meet, which I've already made a video on this in Spanish, but if I need to, I'll make another one in English if there's a lot of professors that don't understand how to use Hangouts Meet. But the idea is to be available to them by video conferencing so that they can receive the help they need when they're trying to resolve these things and they feel like they're being accompanied. And by doing these types of special methodological steps, so to speak, you're going to see the students are actually going to take much more advantage of the time at home when they're doing the exercises than they would have previously. So again, if there's any questions on this, please leave those in the comments below. If I need to make another video on this to clarify certain things, please let me know. If you want other videos, and in relation to something on something similar to this, please let me know as well. And if, and long term, you need help with this, you can also ask me that by email, and I'll be more than happy to set something up so you guys can receive more information on how to set things up like this. Outside of that, I hope this was useful, and please be careful and take care.